We absolutely love Elden Ring over here at Game Ranks. The game's an instant classic for so many reasons. No game is perfect though, and this one is no exception. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Elden Ring problems nobody wants to admit. Before we get going, well, I did express right off the top that Elden Ring is one of our favorites here. I really want to emphasize that this isn't any kind of attack on the game. Even the best games of all time have issues and Elden Ring is no difference. This isn't a hit piece or anything, like I said, we're big fans of the game, but there are some problems we want to talk about that a lot of people don't seem to want to acknowledge. Starting off at number 10, what we would consider a fairly obvious one, hard to deny, the performance. From Software has never been the best with porting. Like anyone who played the original version of Dark Souls on PC knows exactly what we're talking about, but Elden Ring has actually been overall one of their better PC launches, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good enough. The main issues in this game are the stuttering and the slowdown. Now, as far as I'm aware, these aren't issues exclusive to the PC version, but we We've mostly been playing it on PC, so that's a version of the game we have the most experience with, and it's it's a while after launch at this point, and it's still pretty bad. Like, the stuttering's annoying for sure, but the slowdown, where the game seems like it's going in slow motion and then suddenly speeds up, it's almost worse. Like, it, it's weird looking and it's distracting. The whole situation is, is especially annoying because Sekiro, their previous game, ran fantastic on PC. On the other hand, Elden Ring seems to stutter no matter what kind of hardware you've got. Like, we've tried it on an NVIDIA 1070 laptop and a 3080 desktop, and the stuttering was pretty bad on both of them. So we bring this up just hoping that at some point this gets resolved with patches, but we're around three months after launch, like I said, and the game still has some pretty noticeable performance issues. At number 9, reviving Torrent is a pain. Now, number 10 was a pretty major issue, and this one's a little bit more minor. So whose idea was it to make you select yes to revive Torrent? If you don't know, in Elden Ring you get a spirit steed named Torrent. It's pretty tough, but if it gets attacked enough, it will die, and if you want to revive it, you need to use one flask charge. That's all well and good, but the problem here is the interface. Instead of giving you a warning or something, the game just forces open a text box and asks if you want revive your steed for a flask. While it's open, you can't do much but run around, so if you get caught off guard, you're probably going to wind up dead. Even if you know it's coming, it's still annoying to navigate in the heat of a battle. Having to manually make the selection makes the whole thing much more annoying than it needs to be. For most players, it's not going to be a normal scenario or anything. Most of the time, your character dies before Torrent does, but when it does happen, it's beyond annoying. Like, there has to be an easier way to do this. At number 8 is AFK Farmers. If you're playing Elden Ring online, there are a few things more annoying than these guys. AFK farming is simple. How it works is that players invade another player's world, and instead of doing what you'd expect an invader to do, you know, hunt down and fight the host, they just hide in the hopes that the host will either die from playing the game normally or give up and disconnect. Either way, the AFKer is rewarded for their inaction, and it pisses off the rest of the community. It's an exploit, pure and simple. The only fun anyone has with dealing with these guys is coming up with creative ways to kill them, either by attacking through walls or by shooting them from long range. The whole thing exposes issues with how multiplayer works in Elden Ring, and hopefully this is another thing that'll eventually get patched out. At the moment though, it's one of the most annoying things to run into if you're online and, you know, actually want to play the game instead of sit around and doing nothing. And number seven, there is no photo mode. Now, Elden Ring can be a pretty beautiful game at times, so it kind of sucks there's no way to really show it off. Yeah, there's mods that you can use to take pictures, but it would be nice if there was some kind of actual photo mode built into the game. Like, more and more games come out with photo mode. Hell, the Demon Souls remake has a great photo mode. That game was remade from the ground up by Bluepoint, though, and obviously we're talking about From Software. And as far as I can remember, I don't think there's any From game with a built-in photo mode. Everything out there is unofficial. So, at this point, it's kind of hard to say if we'll ever get a photo mode. Maybe the developers are against it or something. I don't really know. But it is something a lot of people, us included, would really like to see properly implemented in this game. And number six is locking on to large enemies. A big part of what makes Elden Ring so interesting is that it introduced new ideas into the Soulsborne formula. 
It feels pretty new in a lot of ways, but there's certain aspects of it that feel pretty old fashioned. Specifically, how lock-on works. For the most part, lock-on's been the same since Demon Souls back in 2009, and while it's not a problem for most encounters, locking onto large enemies is still a huge problem. Trying to target a large enemy can be awkward at best, and it can be more difficult to see certain parts of them, and it can even totally obscure your character, making it nearly impossible to avoid incoming attacks. The game does adjust the camera somewhat to give you a better view of certain larger bosses, but when you get up close and personal, locking on is more like a death wish. You'd get stomped into the ground without being able to tell what's supposed to be happening even. In response, a lot of players just say you shouldn't be locked on in the first place, like that's the common tactic against larger bosses, just don't lock onto them and hope for the best, and uh, mostly that works, but wouldn't it be better if you could just lock onto an enemy without any issues instead? It's one of those things where there's a style of play worth a usable workaround, but the system could be a little better, and then people wouldn't have to find a workaround. At number five is impenetrable quests. Souls games have always had mysterious quests. Generally, how they work is you find a random guy hanging out somewhere and you talk to him. Once you run out of dialogue, they usually move to a new location, usually without telling you anything else. For most players, going through a quest line of Souls games is kind of total luck. But unless you're actively trying to hunt these things down, most people never really experience the entire quest naturally. At a certain point, pretty much every Souls player gives up and just looks for what you're supposed to do on the wiki. Elden Ring's no better, especially at launch. The world is orders of magnitude bigger than any other Souls game, so that means the NPCs are even more spread out and mysterious to hunt down. When it first came out, there was no way to know where these guys are. You just had to look around until you found them. Like, try to find Blythe after Ronnie tells you to find Nokrin. You'll find out pretty quick. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, especially if you don't know where Nokrin is. In a rare moment of weakness, the developers actually made things a little easier for players by adding little quest markers to the map to show where NPCs are, but completing their quest can still be pretty Pretty confusing. Like the Millicent quest, where, yeah, there's a spot on your map telling you where she is, but it doesn't do a lot of good when the markers in an area as dense as the Hallow Tree. Um, so while they're all a little easier to finish, it just makes most of them nearly impossible without a guide, rather than completely impossible. That's, I mean, a little bit of an exaggeration, but not a huge one. And number four, there is no crossplay. Like, I didn't even know about this, and it kind of sucks. There's no crossplay whatsoever. Elden Ring came out on every major platform, but if you're playing on a PlayStation system, you're stuck in the PlayStation ecosystem. Same goes for Xbox. So if you got an Xbox Series X and want to play with your friend on PC, nope, can't do it. I mean, to some extent, it makes sense because hacking and exploits are always going to come more common on PC. So no crossplay there makes some sense at least, but there's no reason why Xbox and PlayStation players can't do co-op, that's ridiculous. Currently, the game has a robust community, so cross-play isn't something that feels strictly necessary, but it'd still be nice to give players the option. At number three, scrolling through spells can be really slow and annoying. Like, it could be argued magic has never been better in a Souls game with the advent of this one, at least in terms of variety and options. Like, there's so many spells you can use at any given time, and a lot of them are really powerful when used strategically in some form of combination. The problem is there really isn't an easy way to do it. How magic works is pretty much identical to how it worked more than 10 years ago with Demon Souls. You slot in a selection of spells you can cast, and if you want to cycle through them, you press up on the d-pad and that's pretty much it. When you got one spell to cast, it's not that big of an issue, but if you need to go through multiple spells at a time, especially when you're in the heat of battle, it's a real pain in the ass. It's just clunky having to slowly cycle through every spell you've got to get to the one that you want. With items, you can assign them to a quick slot menu and quickly access them, but not spells. Elder Ring certainly did do a few things to make the game a little more user-friendly. I do really appreciate that quick item select, but it's amazing they just didn't bother with magic. It might sound a little bit Bit like a nitpick, but play as a magic user long enough, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And number two is overpowered weapons, which is a double-edged sword because while overpowered weapons can be a lot of fun to exploit and use, they also quickly become a crutch that make the overall game worse. Like, you probably know what we're talking about here too, stuff like the Rivers of Blood Katana, which has actually been nerfed somewhat since release, but still considered head and shoulders the best weapon in the game. Then there's Spirit Ashes, like the Mimic Tier, which are also really, really good. Like, it's a summon so powerful that depending on your build, it can basically play the game for you. And those are just two of the most egregious examples. There's 
does a lot more. The problem with overpowered weapons in Elden Ring is the game is supposed to have a ton of variety. Like, there's dozens of weapons to choose from, but when one weapon stands out as being the best, there's just less of a reason to use any of those weapons, especially in multiplayer. When you're part of the community, you just start getting sick of, like, seeing the same weapon build over and over again. Like, maybe someday From will manage to make certain weapons, abilities, etc. a little more fair without totally ruining them, but you never really have any idea what to expect. In the future, maybe the Rivers of Blood will be just another weapon rather than the most overpowered thing out there. And while that'll be a little disappointing for players who like to dual wheel katanas, for everyone else, it will be a breath of fresh air. And finally, at number one, repeat boss fights. Like, everyone loves boss fights in the Soul series. They're big climactic moments in the game, and a big reason why they're so interesting is that they're unique. And that is, in fact, one of the allures of the Souls series and its offshoots. In most of these games, you enter a boss area, you have no idea what you're taking on next, and there's a lot of excitement and anticipation. Elden Ring, for all of its positives, doesn't always do that. Like, there are a lot of repeated boss fights in this game, and it's it's a little disappointing. Sure, there's a few bosses that you only ever fight once, but that's the minority. Every boss, other than those guys, appears at least twice, sometimes more than that, and it just kind of saps away the specialness of an encounter. Like, you're supposed to feel like bosses are a routine thing after you've played through the game, like, ten times. Not the first time around after you've played the same boss a bunch of times. And there's really so many examples of this, it's kind of hard to focus on just one because there's a large number of repeat bosses. Even things like Astol, which seem like they would appear only once, pop up again in a random dungeon. And the fights themselves aren't even bad. Far from it. But if there's one thing that ended up being kind of disappointing, it's this. Some of them, like, they're not even necessary, you know? Like, did we really need to fight the Godskin Apostle and the Godskin Noble again? Only this time, both at once? It's not just cruel, it kind of feels pointless. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscriptions. Click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. And we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks. And right here.